All right, how's it going, Rangers? Sorry you couldn't join us here in the kitchen today this year, but we're gonna show you a little bit of nice seasonal salad that you can do at home with your family. It's very easy, minimal prep, but all things that we're using is in season. So we have some nice kale that we got from our farmers down the road here in Rye. And it's peach season, which is one of the stone fruit seasons. So peaches are actually uh, available around this time of year in New Hampshire. It's a very short season, but they're here, and we like to put a little roast on them, and we're gonna make a nice little salad for everybody. So, um, we're gonna start by making a vinaigrette. There's some Dijon mustard in it, some canola oil, some olive oil. You can choose your own vinegar. Uh, the vinegar we're choosing to use in this one is a champagne vinegar. Uh, Anything you have in your house would be fine, like a white, a red wine, a uh, sherry. Um, most of it will work just fine with each, but this is the one we're choosing for this. Balsamic or no balsamic? Uh, yeah, bal balsamic will work fine. So, we'll send over the recipe to you guys later, but we're going to start by cutting shallots for our vinaigrette. And because they're kids, uh, and I'm not done. What's a shallot? A shallot is a very small onion. Ding. It's a uh, less sharp, more it's a little more mild, um, and it's just mm -hmm. it's nice. You know, onions are the base to like most cooking, so it's nice to have a little bit of onion flavor in, in our vinaigrette. You can admit it if you don't want it, or if you're, there's an allergy or something like that. Oh, we cut it so small that you try as small as you possibly can, so we. Um, don't really bite into large chunks of it. But we just start by cutting. And we can, we're going to scale this recipe down for at home. For you guys, so we're going to make a big batch for the restaurant today. Because this is actually on the menu, we actually take this salad and we serve it, the exact same salad, and we serve it over a roast and a half chicken. Which oh, is wow. really nice, and then we put cheese on the top which is, is a good option so you can eat it along as a salad or you can eat it with a protein it's a nice addition for, so, for those of us that don't eat a lot of kale bread yes we go through a lot of kale here yes so, so people yeah. are really into it yeah people right? like kale i i think it's obviously it's one of those ingredients that people do you know, start to understand, you know, it's very popular. Um, but you, you don't always have to cook it. Like if you find tender kale, you know, you can mm -hmm. you can eat it raw. Like a little massage, a little salt, and it helps eat like lettuce. So that's what we're gonna do here. Okay. Um, as uh, fine as possible, you wanna mix up your shallot. I don't even want to know how long that took you to be able to have a nice scale like that. <laughs> a long time. Amazing. Thank you. So as small as possible. Yes. Can you guys hear me all right in the mask? Yes. All right. So. Start the recipe. Let me just grab a whisk. All right. For the vinaigrette, you need a bowl, a whisk, and then you'll have the recipe in front of you at home. But once again, it's Dijon, shallots, canola oil, and olive oil. Vinegar of your choice. And you start by adding shallots. Bottom of the bowl. These on it just helps emulsify or bring together the vinaigrette. We use two tablespoons of Dijon mustard at home. And there we add our vinegar all in to your shallots, your mustard, and your vinegar go in first. Then you mix your two oils. Little trick. Put this down. The bowl is going to go around for you. That's the whisk. 
and now we're going to start slowly whisking in our oils. So why why do you do it like that and not just dump it in? Um, this this vinaigrette will separate like once you make it and you want to keep it in the freezer. You do want to shake it, um, but it's still the slower you add your oil, the more emulsified things become. So if you just add it together, it, it's going to separate on you like a lot harder than it would if you just push it in this way. So your Dijon helps cling everything together. Stabilize it a little bit. And can I ask another question? Why do you yes. use two different oils? And is I just flavor sometimes. Thing? Sometimes I think straight all. Well, one is two reasons here. Um, canola or vegetable oil is cheaper. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes if it's too much olive oil, it's bitter, and it will overpower your vinaigrette. But I like a little bit in it, so it's it's almost four to one canola mm. to olive. Uh, canola, we just use that for cooking. And it's it's more neutral, so it's like a healthy oil, right? Yeah, it, it's it's fine. I just think that sometimes if you have too much olive oil, that's all you're going to taste. I want to taste the shallot and the vinegar. Almost done here. And then you can store this in container at home. Just make sure you shake it when you go to reuse it. And then we're going to put this aside and we're going to have to re-whip it again before we apply put this aside. So there's the vinaigrette for that dish. Alright. Um, the rest of the salad is pretty easy. We're just going to there's not a lot of knife work here. You just kind of run your hand down and you want to get rid of the stem. You can use this if you're cooking this down, but I wouldn't eat this raw, it's going to be too much. Um, this type of kale is um, it's called red Russian kale that we got from our, our ladies right down the farm. We just tear it into bite-sized pieces. Is it like an heirloom? Um, this, is, this, or, this isn't necessarily an heirloom. No, this is a nice kale from down the road though. Right here in rye. Pull. Make sure you get the stem out. Uh, you can use, your grocery store is going to have your green curly kales or your lacinados. Um, you basically, how we do kale is, or something like that. We would tear it smaller if it was a hardier kale, so like your lacinado. Mm -hmm. You like eat it first and then. Um, you know, it's tougher on the tooth, you want to cut it a little smaller. If it's something that's very young and tender like this, um, bigger pieces are fine. So we're just tearing. And obviously the amount of kale is depending on how many people you're serving. Just gonna make one salad here. step is to remove the pit from the peaches. Um, obviously if you don't want to cook these peaches at home you don't have to. If you have a nice they're totally salad can totally be raw but um, we kind of like the, the roast and the caramelization on on the peach here. So that's kind of how we're doing this dish. So we'll show you how to cook the peach kind of hard here. Grab the peaches, be right back. Three. 
cool. Get it like the kale, kind of like the kale test on the like tenderness, um, the peaches are the same thing, so you want to pick um, you know, the ripest, softest peach possible, and if unfortunate, if you, unfortunately if you don't have harder ones, you might just have to cook it a little longer, that's why we choose to cook the peaches here, sometimes it's not all peaches yeah, are, yeah. are uh, ready to go, um, so the longer you can cook it, the sweeter it becomes, softer it becomes. this and then we're going to mix the kale, the peaches, we add a little pine nut for some texture, we mix it with a vinaigrette, just a little salt, and then um, so we put a little cheese on top. Yes, so please. could you use other uh, fruits as, yes. like, yeah. as a salad and, you know, once you know, like yeah, what of course. could you use? Kale is usually available year round, um, but in the fall apples will be nice. Um, summer, I guess if you like berries, you could do that. I wouldn't cook the berries, but you could roast the apple or if you keep them raw, that's another good option. Um, yeah, other other cher like cherries, other stone fruit this time of year would be great as well. Figs, um, you know, basically what you like. Like you would cook cherries or not? Uh, no, I would just like pickle them or like hit them and put them in raw. Okay. Put them in a little bit of color. Try to soften the peach, caramelize it a little bit. Doesn't take long. What else is everyone doing this year? What um, doing? Greg is doing good uh, meatballs. Yep. And uh, a, a marinara, marinara sauce. Cool. And uh, Greg. Uh, it's yellow peppers, stuffed yellow peppers. Ooh, yeah. So it, it worked out good. It's like an appetizer, salad, and a main yeah. course. So. So when you, 
you do a dish like this for your restaurant, do you like taste all these different things first? Or yeah. do you just yeah, kind of all try yeah. different things? Yeah, we do. We're not too, not that we're not inventive, but we usually, we're very simple in our approach here, so we, mm -hmm. we stick with a lot of try and true flavor profiles. But we all, we all discuss it, we all talk about it, yeah. and uh, see if it works for us, and then we, uh, Eat it, put it on the menu. Yeah. So we'll re um, most of our dressing new shirts come together for us. Dress it uh, to your liking if you like it. You know, a little more dressing. We added a little salt. So in, in the bowl we have kale, our peaches, our pine nuts, salt. That's it. If you choose to use some pepper, you can. And then we just mix it up. Oh. Kind of massage the kale a little bit together, and it's kind of like a wilty. You can do one or two things. You could cool your peaches down if you didn't want like a warm salad, <laughs> and you can cool them before you add them, or you can go in right now and they kind of <laughs> wilt down the kale a little bit, which is which I like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I like mixing them in so they're nice and dressed. Okay. I don't know if I can send but my mouth is watering. It's that, crazy. It's that simple. You can use, I use a peeler to chip your cheese. What is that kind of cheese? This is, we use, pe this is actually uh, Pecorino Romano. You can use Parmesan. Uh, feta would be real nice on here. Pecorino. Uh, Romano has a little, it's uh, Parmesan-ish in texture, but it has a little more uh, pepper flavor. Mm -hmm. We kind of like the spice with the, the peaches. Feta would be great, goat cheese would be great. Uh, a white cheddar would also be great. Mm -hmm. uh, anything you find in store, uh, you can peel, chip them over the top like that. Or you can use microplane to go over the top like that if you want it less. It. Okay, that looks amazing. That is a nice summer salad. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you, Brett. Cool. Thank you, guys.